Hello, everybody. I'm the Velvet Sparrow. And I'm Heart Hero 456. And we are back with Let's Read Katawa Sojo. In the last episode, uh, Hassel basically showed us that he's a fan of Counting Crows because he's accidentally in love. Accidentally in love. I love that song so fucking much. I used to five star it like on the regular back when I was playing like a rock band. I remember it from Shrek. I mean, like, yeah, that too. But like, I, I first heard it in Shrek. I didn't know what it was until like a rock band. E. So let's get back into reading. A night of restlessness has left me feeling fairly groggy this morning. The events of the previous day keep intruding upon my mind. The memory of how Emmy felt against me. The memory of our wrestling match. They were about to do it. Yeah. The most bothersome. The, mo the memory of her nightmare. She was in so much pain. I can't stop wondering what it must be like for her to wake up with nobody there. The shower shocks me awake with hot water. Awake but still worried. What will happen today? Will things just go back to normal? End of the episode. Back to status quo. Like, this is an episode of the fucking Simpsons. <laughs> yeah. Thank God the status quo as things should always be. Marge? <laughs> That's a terrible Homer Simpson impression. Marge? Marge? I'm Marge. sorry for... I'm sorry for catching a giant fish. <laughs> oh, Homer. You'll always be my homie. I'll crump with you, sweetie pie. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, Marge, what's wrong with you? Have you got have you taken fentanyl? Yes, homie. Now get me more crack! <laughs> huh? Marge needs her pills! <laughs> I need to oh speaking of, of that, I decided to add in a character for my Ruby fanfic who's named Monty Python. You know, named after Ooh. the yeah, named after the comedy troupe and all those movies, right? Guess who I decided to have play him? Who? Brandon Rogers. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, but like the thing is, like the joke is kind of like the joke kind of begins and ends with the casting. It's just Brandon Rogers, except imagine him doing an over-the-top Cockney accent. Oh dear! It appears I've spotted a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> basically that but like it's his whole thing and as a joke like as a little like ball like throw thing he like technically he's a stand-up comedian but he also owns a circus and he dresses like blitz ah uh, that's adorable oh actually i could probably make him a ram faunus as a reference to that and his boyfriend is an owl faunus uh make him a horse faunus actually because blitz is obsessed with horses but the horns okay fine yeah, the horns and the hooves, man. End of the episode. Back to status quo. There was a connection yesterday. Something that nearly pushed us past the boundaries of normal friendship. Would that have been so bad? My mind goes back to the look in Emmy's eyes after our pillow fight. It almost seemed like she was daring me to go on. Almost. But I can't know for sure. Anyway, the track captain's probably first in her affections. But even as I say that, my mind is already snorting der and derisively. I'm just looking for an excuse. A reason for everything to go wrong. A reason not to try. It's not as if I've even seen the two of them together outside of track practice. And clearly, he's never visited. Emmy said as much herself. If they were if they were close, surely he'd visit. I'm such a wuss! I don't just go for it anyway. Damn the consequences. That's what Emmy- Just do it! Just do it! Don't, don't let your, your dreams, dreams be dreams. Don't let your, your dreams be dreams. Yesterday you set tomorrow, so just do it. Just what are you waiting for? Ah! Yeah, and then Shia LaBeouf takes a fucking shit on stage. <laughs> yeah, that's hell. I know that's what she'd do, which is particularly why I'm convinced that there's no interest on her hand. She hasn't acted either. Maybe because of this track, Captain, it's possible she got a, she's got a bit of an unrequited crush thing going on. 
but who would be able to clarify their relationship? Sure as hell can't be Emmy. She'd probably just laugh and ask why I wanted to know, and I'm not ready to answer that yet. Ren, Ren would probably just give me some cryptic answer or something, and then with my luck, she'd just ask Emmy, who would ask me why I wanted to know, and I've already covered that problem. I wonder. Could I get away with asking the nurse? He seems pretty protective of Emmy, so I'm sure he'd know if something was up. And he owes me for not letting me... I think Emmy know he forgot to tell me about her being ill, so he'll keep quiet. If you ask me why I want to know, though, I can't. I can shake him off. Just say I'm curious as a friend. He'll buy that, won't he? Of course. Let's settle then. After the run, I'll go talk to him while Emmy's waiting outside the office. I doubt this... he'll buy that. Yeah, he, I, I doubt he will. Because, like, the nurse is going in full stepdad mode. He's like, hey, I am banging that girl's mom. I am basically her dad. And whatever you do to her, I'll do to you. Yeah, and I just, like, look at him and be like, is that a promise, daddy? Yeah. Yeah. What's the name of this fucking song? Moment of Decision. This sounds more like someone just fucking died in really sad music. Yeah. But then again, you can barely hear it because I'm fucking shouting over it. Wow, seriously, Emmy's good options are, like, the easiest fucking choices in the world to make. I mean, they, they yeah, they really are. I mean, except, like, for Act 3, because, like, there's only one option you really need to make. But, like, Emmy, like, you can just be the most straightforward with. Actually, that's probably why I view her as the canon with, like, the biggest quotation marks I can ever use. Love interest for her Sal because of just how easy it is for the two of them to get along. Yeah. Yeah, look... Look, audience, Josh and I have made it, made it really clear. We'd fucking spit roast Ren, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but and we haven't really made up our minds about Lily, Hanako, and Shizune yet because we haven't done their routes yet. I used to want to uh, do the freaking whiskey tango uh, with Hanako because back in the day, I was obsessed with shy girls who covered their hair partially. And also because I was playing Teaching Feeling at the time and I kind of uh, had like a whole damaged flower obsession, which thankfully I've gotten over. <laughs> Also, just a note, just note, don't play Teaching Feeling. Thing. It's the, it's about a lolly. It's about a what? It's about a lolly and doing things to said lolly. I was, no. I was 14. That's my only excuse. I was 14. Also, the guy who made it is like a huge fucking xenophobe, so don't, don't give him anything. Ugh. Fuck right. I will never understand xenophobia. Yeah, well, there are a lot of prejudice I won't understand, but xenophobia is just one. I just—it just seems like racism with extra steps. Yeah, except it's all about the language instead of it being about the color of one's skin. Yeah. I need to learn like what the exact differences are between that, especially since like, especially since like with writing the Ruby thing, like I want to actually write the racism subplot with the Faunus in a way that's not inadvertently pro being racist to Faunus. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of a problem, and uh, thankfully I haven't seen too many of Ruby's more diehard stands defend that because it'll be like, oh yeah, the racism plot fucking sucks. But the people who really like the Faunus stuff, they either don't know much about how racism actually works, or they're racist themselves. Like, it's a very... The people who are oppressed are just as bad as their oppressors for wanting to fight back against them, and they all deserve what they get from the hands of their oppressors. That sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I still portray Adam Taurus as a villain, but, like, he did not deserve any of the awful things that happened to him when he was a kid. He did not deserve yeah. to get beaten by his dad. He did not deserve to get branded in the Schnee dust mines. He did not deserve to go through any of that, but he's still a villain who needs to be taken down. Yeah, exactly. Because, yeah, because the guy's a fucking nut job. Uh, that's the clear distinction. Like, Garth, like, sympathizes with him and for a bit. And he's like, dude, you and I are basically cut from the same cloth. If you, if I lived your life and you mine, would you really end up so different from me? It's a joke because I play fucking Bury the Light during their final fight. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like just the... And it's basically just like uh, Virgil Mission 20 on fucking Virgil Must Die mode. That is how epic that fight will be. I will describe it in the most visceral of detail. You will feel the, the fucking song pumping through your veins. It is that good. 
I will try my damnedest to make that fight as enjoyable to read as it would be to watch. I promise you, audience, and you, Josh, that. Cannot wait to read it. I'm, you're going to need to wait a couple of years, I'm going to be honest. Nah. Yeah, it, it takes me forever to write shit. But once I'm done with... Uh, once I'm done with a uh, Velvet Wing uh, thing of se season one, I'll get to working on the Ruby stuff, and I'll work on that until volume three. Then go back to working on Velvet Wing. All right. Yeah. Okay. There's no sign of Emmy when I arrive at the track. She's still too ill. I decided to give her ten minutes. I'm a little early, and she was ill yesterday. So if she takes a while to show up, it wouldn't be surprising. So I just hate to waste my time. So I occupy myself by stretching and pacing back and forth anxiously. What if I went too far yesterday? Was it? What if she doesn't come because she's embarrassed? What if... You're early again, Hassal. I'm impressed. Just like that, I feel some tension, some of the tension leaving my body. Emmy seems to be bright and cheerful as usual, with no sign in that she was even ill the other day, and much less of had that less than restful sleep. Still, I have to ask. Sleep well last night? It's just a throwaway question. Small talk. The sort of thing people ask someone they bump into a, a, in the cafe while getting their morning coffee. Not for us. At least not for me. I don't think if Emmy realizes that I'm actually concerned about how well she slept last night, but the question does give her pause. After a short moment of what seems like her gendering, generally pondering this, she nods. Yep, she sure did. Was it because of me? Did I actually help? Or are you just saying that to get me to stop asking questions? Good to hear. Emmy grins and begins warming up. So, ready to begin? <laughs> Am I ready? Of course I'm ready. I was born ready. Emmy laughs at my bravado and we take off running. I keep a steady pace the whole time, breathing steadily. I still feel dead at the end, but at least I don't gasp like a fish out of water now. Emmy is positively beaming after the run today. Nice job, Miss Sal. You're improving. You'll be half as fast as me in no time. That last line is delivered with a teasing grin that I've grown all too used to. Oh, eh. how exciting. <laughs> Emmy begins to run her sprints while I take a cooldown lap. She's really pushing herself today. By the time I'm done with my lap, she's laying across one of the bleachers, looking exhausted. Goodness, not pushing it a little too much today, are you? You just... You did just have a call. You did you did just have a cold, you recall. Then he gives an annoyed snort and sits up. Ah! I'm just trying to make up for lost time, that's all. I went twice as hard today, you know. A good run always gets the kinks out, you know? Clears the mind, too. No? Oh? Emmy nods vigorously. Yep, it's a great outfit. It's a great outlet for that sort of thing. She does not explain further, and I don't ask. I suspect I know the real reason why she went so hard today. Being sick had nothing to do with it. Something's bothering her. Maybe the nightmare. Maybe something else. But it's not my place to pry. She'd tell me if she wanted to know. I'm sure that comes in handy. You have no idea. The sincerity in her voice confirms my suspicion. The only problem is. Even though I know she'd tell me if she wanted me to know, I still want to know. Something on your mind, then? Emmy doesn't seem surprised by my question. Instead, she shrugs. Nah, it's nothing worth getting worried about. She seems as if she's trying to convince herself as much as she's convincing me. I open my mouth to ask if yesterday is responsible for her current state of mind, but think better of it. Too much risk of her taking the question the wrong way. Besides, I'm not even sure myself what to think about yesterday. Really, I can only get about as far as how it felt to have Emmy sleeping next to me before my brain shuts off. Having her right, having her before me now, covered in sweat and looking wryly at me, she's making it difficult to think. Yeah, I hear you. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce you to how I write the relationship between Garth and Ruby in the Ruby fanfic? Hmm. It's just this shit. Except they talk about no. weapons because they're nerds. We better hurry to see the nurse. We're running short on time. Aren't we always? Emmy laughs at this dry chuckle that seems almost that seems most un Emmy like. Too true. For a brief moment, she looks old, worn down by some old hurt. 
but just like yesterday, I can almost see her shouldering the burden and straightening up slightly. And then she's back to being Emmy again. Come on then, Hassel, race ya! With a sudden smile, she darts off. Hey, no fair! I take off after her, knowing that I won't catch her, but not caring. Same deal with Garth and Ruby, because as we all know, Ruby's semblance involves her moving at like superhuman speeds, and Garth is like, I don't know, probably like above average speed when it comes to most hunter and huntresses because he's part wolf. Dude's crazy fast, but he's not on her level. I wouldn't exactly say Ruby's a speedster though. I don't I don't know. Even if there's no chance of catching her, I still run after her. Emmy's waiting for me at the door as I arrive. Well, well, look who's finally shown up. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy your victory while you can. Emmy grins as the nurse pokes his head out the door. Oh, there you are. Come on in, Hassel. In what has become a familiar routine by now, he checks my blood pressure and my heart rate. A bit fast today, isn't it? Yeah, kind of raced Emmy here. The nurse laughs. <laughs> That's never a good idea. He leans in to whisper me with a in a conspiratory manner. I don't know if you've heard, but Emmy's a bit of a track star. I reel back and knock surprise. <laughs> really? She never mentioned it before. The two of us share a laugh. Did she do okay today? Cold seemed to bother her. Why don't you ask her? He rolls his eyes in exasperation. Of course I'm going to ask her too, but she'll tell me that she didn't have any problems regardless of whether she did or not. So I'm asking you, because you're her friend, and probably tell me if she had trouble today. She puts it that when he puts it that way, it makes a lot more sense. She seemed pretty good today. If a little more tired than usual. She's already feeling better when I dropped by yesterday, so I'm not that surprised. The nurse nods, though I notice he tenses slightly when I mention yesterday's visit. Well, that's good to hear. I figured it was just a 24-hour thing. Emmy tends to recover quickly from colds and the like. Hey, speaking of Emmy. Are she in the track, Captain? Well, you know. A look of suspicion crosses his face. Why do you ask? Well, it's just that they seem kind of close, and I was just curious, you know? I'd never ask her, because that kind of thing would be embarrassing. So far, so good. Now, really sell it. Besides, I think yeah. they'll make a cute couple. The nurse laughs. Well, I don't suppose you're the first to think that. But I can say with some certainty the two of them will never do anything like that. Certainty. Yep. Not that I could tell you, of course. Confidentiality and all that. He's gay! Yeah. Yeah, the track captain's gay. <laughs> hey, yeah, right. He's like holding a secret over my head. Yeah, that too. Alright, get out of here. I'm a busy man, you know. I roll my eyes at his last statement and head out the door, motioning to Emmy to go on in. The whole time, I keep trying to keep from doing a celebratory dance. You fucking dweeb! Ah. That sounds like such a fucking loser. I love him. Uh, fucking Jeffrey looks at Hassau and wishes he could be as much of a Giga Chad as this guy. Eh. No, wait, no. Jeffrey looks at Kenji and is like, I model my life after you. And Kenji's like, bro, I literally just had sex once and had no idea how to react. And that's precisely the sort of thing I wanted to hear. I'm half tempted to make some sort of move on him, some sort of a move on Emmy right now, but I think the nurse would probably disapprove. She, yeah, he probably beat you with a fucking chancla. Huh, he radiates Latina mom energy. Eh. Besides, I still don't know exactly how Emmy feels about me. I mean, it's obvious that she cares about me as a friend, but something more than that, I can't be certain. Even so, I can't help but just feel hopeful. I just need to figure out a good time to tell Emmy exactly how I feel. That puzzle should keep me occupied for the rest of the day, at least. The rooftop is completely deserted. Normally I could count on Rin to be up here before me, but she's strangely absent. I wonder if she just decided to accompany Emmy to the cafeteria for once. It seems pretty unlikely, but it's all I can think of right now. Part of me wants to go look for Rin, but a larger part of me is too pleased with the way the sun feels in my skin to care. I pick idly at my lunch while I wait for Emmy and Rin to show up. Doesn't take long for me to hear the sounds of someone coming up the stairs. I wait until the big until the door opens it begins to open before talking. Took you long enough. Keep me waiting for you, mm. honestly. The two of you are, it's not gonna be them. Oh. Alright, place your bets. Who's it gonna be? My money's on Kenji. <laughs> yeah, it could be Kenji, but a part of me feels like it might be 
Well, fuck it. I'm going to say it's probably Misha and Shizune. <laughs> huh? Well, that's odd. Oh. Well, who do, was it? Well, who do we give money to? No one? No one's good. <laughs> yeah, the only person standing in the doorway is Emmy, who looks mildly confused. What do you mean, huh? It's me, you know, Emmy. We run in the mornings. She grins, and I feel my heart jump slightly in my chest at the sight. But yeah, I, I knew that. I was just confused. Where's Ren? Emmy's grin is replaced by a rather guilty-looking expression. Yeah, um, about that. I kind of, sort of, gave her my cold. Oh, what? Am I in risk You're Patient too? zero. Patient zero. Well, the zombie apocalypse began. It all began with a cute anime girl with no legs that spread a cold to her best friend. Which means by extension, she'd extend that cold to my OC, who would definitely be in Ren's room at the time. They wouldn't be doing anything. He'd just be like sitting in a room. He's just sitting in a room on a, on a chair just looking at her condescendingly. <laughs> yeah, because he's based off Dr. House, so he's kind of got to be an asshole. Yeah, yeah. I'm at risk, too. It makes sense, after all. I mean, I were in close contact the other day. So what did she and Ren do that got her ill? Stay on, old lad. Don't go down that road. <laughs> oh. Hey, we won't be finding much down that road. <sighs> yeah, thanks. Thanks, fucking Herman Munster. I forgot that was his name. No, that the guy who uh, plays um, that's not, that's the name. That, like, it's just the same actor. That, like, that's not the name of the actor's name. That's not even the name of the character whose line you're referencing. Like, I know what you're doing. It's like it's the old guy from across the road from from Pet Cemetery. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like I forgot what his fucking name is. Man, don't want to go down that road. Huh. Sometimes, dead is better. <laughs> Ren's just probably got a worse immune system than me. You know, she strikes me as the kind of person who doesn't eat a lot of garlic. Hey. Yeah. Emmy seems shocked by my comment, like she hasn't considered that before. I hope not. I feel terrible if you, if you got ill because of me, Hassal. Oh man, I think I feel a fever coming on. Emmy looks horrified and then quickly shifts into a more angry expression. Hassal! Hey. Yeah, you stop getting sick this instant! I won't have it! Impulsively, she seizes me by the collar. Are you listening to me, Hassau's immune system? Get your ass in gear! I give a smart salute. Did they just give him a fever? <laughs> Duly noted, ma'am. He's faking. Right, Emmy steps back and nods, satisfied. Good. You're not allowed to miss any of our morning runs, after all. But you missed the morning run! No. But you missed a morning run! Emmy crosses her arms and looks at me haughtily. Yeah, but that's a special oh. case. It was me and not you. That's not an explanation at all. Emmy looks flabbergasted. Kidding, right? The explanation makes perfect sense. No, it doesn't. It's a blatant double standard. I don't see what that has to do with anything. Oh, fine. Emmy seems pleased by her victory. Anyway, is Rin going to be okay? She's not terribly ill, right? Oh. Emmy shakes her head. Nope, she'll be fine. I got her some cold medicine. That should help her. Although I probably should have made sure she didn't try to take them all at once. She's done it before. Oh, you know? God. Oh, yeah, that. She got high off cold medicine in the other route. Hmm. Wait a second. How much you want to bet this is like a correlated bit of canon? Like, because Rin was, got sick in her route because of Emmy's cold. Damn. Yeah, it probably would have happened. See, there is a proper timeline of events that branch into each other. Some things are destined to happen regardless of what route you view them in. Somehow I don't find this at all surprising. Of what? what? Ren getting sick and downing an entire thing of cold medicine and getting high as fuck off of it? Or the branching timelines theory? I'm gonna go with the branching timelines theory. Yeah. I doubt Ren is one to pay attention to maximum doses and such. God damn it! Yeah. You should probably check in on her later, just to make sure. Just to make sure. Emmy shrugs. I'll stop by after practice. She'll be fine until then. I nod, figuring that line of conversation is over. The only problem is, I don't know what else to talk about. So... Got any more Trek meets coming up? 
this is a terribly roundabout way of trying to see if she's free on the weekend. <laughs> if she's free, maybe I can ask her on a date or something. Well, assuming I can get myself to actually form the words. Amy shakes her head. Nah, not for another couple weeks, I think. Season's winding down. Oh well, yeah, I came right in the middle of things, didn't I? Does that mean exams are coming up soon? I should probably look into that. Uh, what are you doing on weekends if there's not a meet? Eyebrow goes up, and Emmy gets a teasing look on her face. You're awfully inquisitive today, aren't you? I shrug and hope it looks casual. Just making conversation. I don't know what it's like to be a track star, after all. <laughs> Flattery. She waves a hand idly. I'm not actually that good, you know. You just happen to see me on a good day, is all. You liar. <laughs> yeah. But humility is a sign of a good, good, of a good athlete. At least that's what my dad used to say. She shrugs and tries on When scroll. dad was alive! No. <laughs> that was the guitar riff from When My Mother Was Here from Persona 5. The Futaba's Palace theme. Mm. Yeah. Uh, she shrugs and tries unsuccessfully to hide a rather troubled expression from... Try the, to hide the rather troubled expression her face has taken on. Hey, what's up? You seem bothered by something. Emmy starts to deny it and sighs in defeat. I wonder if she, too, is tired from get, being sick to get herself to deny it like usual. That, or that she's sad because there isn't a Bucky's opening up soon. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't funny. You get a nose exhale and that's it. <laughs> Or if she actually just trusts me enough at this point to open up. Well, you remember last night? What's, what do we got here? Oh. Oh, that's a, that's a fucking telling name right there. The real beginning. Yeah. Well, you remember last night? Do I ever? I settle for nodding, Barbara. It's not the first time that's happened to me. Actually, I kind of... I get them kind of... She pauses as if it suddenly occurred to her what she's doing. It's almost like she's breaking some sort of personal rule here. But she starts up again, choosing her words carefully. Well, not often, but on occasion. It's just been one of those weeks where that that's what happens. A sigh escapes her and she looks terribly frustrated. I reach over and give her a hug, which, unlike last time, didn't doesn't appear to shock her. Instead, to sell. Like, like every other girl on the planet, I also get horny sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, she seems to relax as I wrap my arms around her. We stay like that way for a while. Hey, you know I was serious last night. You really can talk to me if stuff like this is bothering you. It's, it's always difficult to do this sort of thing solo, you know? Emmy smiles and breaks the embrace, but stays leaning on my shoulder. Thanks, Sal. I'll be fine, I think. I can see her reassembling herself, ready to bottle it all up again. Guess the top is closed now. So, hey, give any more thought into that career survey? Can't say I have. I don't tend to plan very far ahead, you know? Although, I suppose I could start looking into college, huh? I shrug. I suppose. Unless you were serious about that pirate thing. Last I checked, pirates don't have much need for universities. Unless there's, like, a pirate university out there somewhere. There fucking better be. I'd love to go to pirate university. You have to dress like an yeah. asshole, drink all the time, and catch hepatitis. I mean, technically, there is a pirate at university, but it's only in Somalia. Right. Even then, they're not the fun kind of pirates. Yeah. No, they're not even actual pirates. They're buccaneers. Exactly. Yeah, because they... Yeah, because they hang out by a shoreline and then, like, take a small boat up to a ship instead of getting into epic battle... Well, it's by blasting cannons by a giant ship side. Yeah. I mean, technically they don't need the cannons. They just need really big guns or a rocket launcher. Yeah, that's why Somalian pirates suck. They, uh, well, uh, that was until the kids from South Park got their hands on them. Yeah. Somalian pirates, we... Unless there's, like, a pirate university out there somewhere. Emmy giggles and starts to look at a little like her old self. But there's a new element to her expression. Impish, that's how I describe it. Amy looks impish, looking up at me with her head nestled onto my shoulder. Would you come with me if I ran off to be a pirate? Of course I would. 
in the right mind to pass up the opportunity to be pirates with you. Well, when you put it that way, I'm not sure. <laughs> she giggles again. I notice that my heart seems to have sped up. Probably due to Emmy's proximity to me. That hint of strawberries again. I cannot but grin as I gaze down at her. She's happy again. Hey, Hassau? If you're going to kiss me, you should probably do it soon. I think the lunch bell is about to ring. Oh my god! She knows! She knows! She knows! My thoughts grind to a sudden halt. I'm pretty sure my mouth is hanging open in shock. All I can manage is a strangled... Huh? They amuse... This amuses Emmy even more. You were thinking about it, weren't you? She sits up, bringing her face level with mine. I'd probably enjoy it, you know. You are really... Well... She composes herself, looking like she's about to say something important. If you haven't figured it out by now, I think I've developed a bit of a crush on you. You're gonna have to do something about that. Oh my god. Oh damn! Yep, Emmy's a keeper. Piss out, you can have her. God damn, this is great. Hey. This time her grin short circuits several important thought processes. At some point, I turn towards her, and at another point, my arms moves around my her arms move to around my neck. At yet another, my arms wrapped around her waist. I'll be damned if I could precisely t if I could tell precisely when that happened. But at the moment, there's only a voice in the back of my head yelling at me to kiss her. I look into Emmy's eyes. Na 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 my oh my, my you got that voice inside. You better girl, kiss the girl. girl. <laughs> there it is. The thing I saw yesterday on the bed is there again. This fucking horny ass freak. <laughs> yeah, Hassal, turns out you like a lady in the streets, but a freak in the sheets. And guess what? Emmy is that times five. It suddenly strikes me that she's worried that I'll reject her. It's a silly worry for her to have. Oh my god, they fucking did it! They ma this is happening a lot sooner than Rin's route, but then again, it made sense for Rin to not immediately go for this sort of thing. Her lips taste faintly of strawberries. Chill out, Dave. Jame Chill out, James Franco. Wait a second. If if Hisao is Harry Osborne, does that make me Spider-Man? No. Uh, <laughs> does that make me the apartment owner? Yes. <laughs> okay, and that makes you the guy who worked at Joe's Pizza. Go! Go! She leans into the kiss, her arms tightening around the back of my head, making sure I don't pull away. Not that there's any danger of that. It's a churning feeling in my gut. The world falls away. Just me, her, and this bench. My arms tighten, drawing her waist closer, entranced by the feel of her. I inhale her it's scent. me, you, and this brick wall you built between us. <laughs> I thought you were going to reference Asdif. Nah. It's just you, me, and the moon. Hey, you guys should kiss! My mind's trying desperately to memorize everything about how she tastes, how she smells, how she feels. The ringing of the bell snaps us both back to reality. Oop, there goes gravity. And we break the kiss. Emmy's cheeks are slightly flushed, and she seems to be catching her breath. In defense, so am I. We stand there for a moment, trying to wrap our heads around what we've just done. Emmy is the first to break the silence. So, want to grab dinner after I'm done with practice? What a coincidence. I was about to ask you the same thing. Well, actually, I suppose it was going to be some kind of proper date on the weekend or something, but the thought was there, I think. Emmy gives me a playful shove. Yeah, right. You're still in shock from how incredibly awesome I am at kissing. Yeah, we begin to head back downstairs, back to our respective classrooms. Hey, I didn't see you talking immediately afterwards either. Hey. That I didn't. So you have to practice this out. She leans, she leans in quickly and gives me a quick kiss in the middle of the hallway, sending me into another brief state of mental freefall. I don't have any jokes for this. You actually got this one, man. I won't even scream. I am a surgeon. I'm not going to scream it either. Freddie Highmore can't even ruin this moment. Yep. 
As I head into my classroom, I, a giggling Misha greets me. Why, he chan you romantic, you fuck! How dare you? How did you figure it out? Uh... Why, he chan you romantic, you... Did you confess on the rooftop? Did you? Yeah, I know, it's a fucking anime, what do you expect? Uh, actually, I think it was the other way around. This sends Misha into a fresh fit of laughter. <laughs> <laughs> Young love is so unpredictable, isn't it? Yeah, you should know, Misha. How's that thing with Shizune going? Well, she hasn't started sucking my titties yet, but I'll get there. As being Misha, I suppose I have to ex expect it for... Ex I, should, I should have expected for her to tease me like this. I guess. Before I can really respond, Mudo's entered the room and Misha skips off to her seat, giggling all the while. I suspect that'll get into that sort of conversation. And I'll get a lot of that sort of conversation now, especially seeing as Emmy kissed me right in the middle of the hall. Somehow I don't care about that. For the first time since arriving here, my heart feels light. Cause it doesn't matter now what, what happens. happens. I will never give up the fight. <laughs> Act three, perspective. Tell the chef to get me some perspective. <laughs> Tell the chef I'd like a fresh bottle of perspective. Tell him to hit me with his best shot. Nah, that's not the sort of thing you want to be doing as a food critic, Ego. Just saying. Yeah. My head's in a spin all through Mudo's class. I'm going to have dinner with Emmy, who wants to be my girlfriend, no less. A date. And then she kissed me. I kiss. I keep going back to it, playing it over and over in my mind again and again. Cause she kissed me through the phone, kiss me through the phone, see you later. What? That, that kiss, that, everything about that moment felt so right. My mind drifts off, lost in, in thoughts of Emmy. Nakai, hello? Fuck, why do I keep reading your shit? Nakai, hello? Seems like I've drifted a bit too far. What? Egad, you contracted some kind of amnesia. Someone get the nurse! The class chuckles at Mudo's antics. Sorry, sir. Hmm. Won't happen again and all that, right? Actually, no, the more I think about it, Mudo would be perfectly voiced by David Laurie. He just is a house, but without the limp. I'm trying to do a fucking. I'm trying to do a goddamn Markiplier impression. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Markiplier. Welcome back to Let's Play Five Nights at Freddy's, an indie horror game that you suggested en masse, and I saw that Yami Mash played it, and he said it was really good. And I'm very eager to see what is up, and that is a terrifying animatronic bear. Yeah. Family Pizzeria looking for someone to support the night shift. 12 a.m., the first night. If I didn't want, hey, if I didn't want to stay here for one day, why would I stay here at five? <laughs> How many, dude? Let that be a testament to how many fucking times I've watched that video. I've watched Markiplier's Five Nights at Freddy's Let's Plays more than I've watched all of One Piece. I mean, like, are you even done with One Piece? Yeah, I've caught. I'm fully caught up. Oh, okay. Did you read this part? Mm. Yeah, I did. Okay. Exactly. Precisely. Mudo brightens considerably. Well, lovely to hear. I'd hate to have my star pupil slacking at slacking. Ah, Jesus Christ! Off after all. I've been doing well, but I'd hardly qualify as a star pupil. I think. I'm fairly certain that this class is the sort that everyone does well in. It's just memorizing formulas. Through my word, I managed to pay attention for the rest of the class. Mikai, may I have a word with you? No booty calls after 12. Eh. I wonder if I'm in trouble for oh. earlier. Uh, sure. Am I in trouble? Mudo looks genuinely confused for a moment. Beg your pardon? He tilts his head to one side and thinks for a moment. Oh, that. No, no, you're not in any sort of trouble. There's just a question I want to ask you. What's that? Do you believe in love after love? 
Nothing terrible. I was just wondering what your plans for or after graduation are. Are you going to university? Yeah, I guess. Can't really see a reason not to go. Given into given any thought to what you'll study? Not really. No. I figure I'll come up with something when I get there. Middle laughs. Taking things as they come, eh? Giggity. Eh. I'd argue against it, but that's how I did things when I went to university. Well, not really. I knew I'd go into science. I just wasn't sure which one. Ended up with physics. But couldn't just as well have gone for astronomy or what have you. Actually, I did go for chemistry first. But there were all sorts of things. Muno trails off and frowns slightly. Takes a minute for him to recover his train of thought. I wait patiently for him to continue. So anyway, I did a lot of physics as well because I had an interest in that. But I wasn't sure if it was me, or if it was for me. So I went back to chemistry, and here we are, yes? He smiles at me enthusiastically as if waiting for me to confirm that, yes, here is where we are. So here we are in the future, and it's bright. I don't know that one either. Somehow I get the feeling that Mudo had a plan for this conversation, but I'll be damned if I can figure it out. I'm sorry, I'm not following you. Mudo frowns and rubs his chin a bit, looking perplexed, then snaps his fingers as if he just remembered the, what the point of all this was. Right. Yes, you. Me? Yes. You should look into studying one of the sciences. You... You're fantastic at it. Unless you'd rather go into math. Muno makes a sour face. Not a big fan of straight math. I always preferred gay math. <laughs> uh, I always liked the experiments more than the proof than the proofs. You're saying I should study science at a university. Muto seems thrown off balance by my question. Well, sort of. You can also join the science club. Trouble is, there's not actually a science club. I'm guessing Mudo is the kind of person who really liked Bill Nye. Yeah, he grew up on Bill Nye the Science Guy. No, he was probably in college by the time Bill Nye had a show. Yeah, but there could be me. You could even be a charter member. A founding father. Of course, <laughs> you need to find other members. It's really bad that the only person I think who would willingly join that is Kenji. Yeah. Well, only if you wanted to. We could just start it up with the two of us. And, um, I could give you things to read, and we could talk about them. Uh, and I could help you get ready for university, and such as well. I, you're, uh, wanna potty platter? <laughs> Wait. Muda rummages through and in his briefcase and tosses me a, look, a book. Read that. If it's interesting, then we can talk about it. A brief history of time. I don't know if I actually want to read this, but Ludo seems pretty excited about it. What's this about? Mm. Huh. Time, space, space time, black holes and such. And it's not that dense. Just to see if that sort of thing interests you. You understand? Hang around after class and we can either discuss it or I can show you how to make explosives in the lab. 
<laughs> Wait, really? He waves a hand at my quizzical expression. Joking. Sorry. This man knows how to make Molotovs. <laughs> eh. Still, I've kept you here long enough for now. Think about science as a career path, Nakai. I think you'd enjoy it. Uh, okay, I will. Thanks for the book. I leave the classroom and look up at the clock. Quite a chunk of time to kill until Emmy's out of practice. Virgin! Fuck off. <laughs> Guess I'll give this book a look. I should probably shower as well. Showering before a date's only proper, right? Head back to the dorms. I wonder where I'm supposed to meet Emmy anyway. She said after practice, but she didn't say where I should find her. Guess I can just swing by the track. That's probably the best anyway. If she needs a shower, I can just wait for her to run in the room or something. Or in the hallway. I guess that would be better as well. Take a quick shower, remembering to take my medication once I hop out. Now for a look at this book. <laughs> okay, I think I settled on who I think would be a good voice. Nice for Mudo. David Hayter doing a solid snake voice. Huh. Uh, or I right. teach you how to make explosives in the lab. I wake up with a start. Shit, what time is it? Glance at the, at the clock and reveals I've been asleep for nearly an hour. Oh, thank goodness. Emmy's practice should be finishing up soon. I throw on some casual clothes and head for the track. Somehow I get the feeling we won't be doing anything fancy for dinner. Emmy doesn't strike me as a very fancy sort of person. Still, I suppose there's a lot I've yet to know about Emmy. Despite our newfound closeness, I still feel like I don't know her as well as I should. Ah, oh, well, I have lots of time to fix that. To be honest, I'm looking forward to getting to know her more. So caught up in my own thoughts that I hardly registered that I'm already at the track. Emmy is nowhere to be found. I don't even see any signs of the track team. This could be embarrassing. Turn to head to the girls' dormitory when I hear a shout. Hey, it's Al! I turn to see Emmy he making a beeline for me with a gym bag slung over her shoulder. She's changing into some decidedly more casual clothing. A pair of shorts and an olive green top. Her running blades have been replaced by more realistic looking legs that probably wouldn't fool anyone. Mm. Emmy doesn't seem to care about that. A fact which makes me smile. Hey, you came! I mean, I figured you would, but still. So they find myself wrapped in a rather affectionate hug and it proves to be impossible for me to keep what must be the world's largest grin off my face. <laughs> well, of course I came. Be crazy not to, right? Emmy ponders for a moment. You know what? That's true. I mean, I'm pretty amazing after all. I shrug in response. I certainly think so. It's an offhand remark, which is why I'm surprised to see it seems to have caught Emmy by surprise. She blushes and smiles warmly at me before planting a kiss on my lips. Now it's my turn to be surprised. <clears throat> Emmy steps back, resting her weight on her back heel, looking pleased with herself. My brain fumbles for an appropriate response. I should compliment you more often. Emmy laughs and gives me a playful shove. Jerk. I throw an arm around Emmy's shoulders and please, and she immediately leans into me as if we're the most natural thing in the world. So, where to? I'm not actually sure. Where do people go on dates around here anyway? It's a damn good question. I've got no idea. Why don't we just head down to Aramart and grab something portable? Emmy's face brightens at the idea. A picnic! I think you're on to something, Hassau. Yeah, Emmy snakes her arm around my waist and we begin to head for the front gate. I'm entirely unsure of what I'm meant to do in this situation, but at least Emmy seems to be equally clueless. Despite the relaxing feeling of being with Emmy, I still can't help feeling a little tense. What if I do something wrong? I make an ass out of myself. The trip to Oromar is accompanied with Emmy's chatter about how practice went. Keep quiet for the most part, merely enjoying the warmth of being around Emmy. We get a few odd looks from passerbys, but I don't mind. We wind up buying some bread and instant noodles, realizing too late that we cannot that we can't actually cook the ladder in the park. Oh well, I'll make it for lunch or something. That'll work. 
The park is located after a brief loss of direction that I blame entirely on Emmy. She? She, of course, blames me. We find a spot beneath the tree and sit down. I lean back against the trunk. Emmy sits across from me. Guess we should have brought a blanket or something to sit on, huh? Emmy shrugs. I don't mind. Neither do I. Emmy tosses me a package of bread and we dig in. Curry bread. Interesting. I guess I wasn't really paying attention to what I grabbed at the store. Mm. Hey, Sal. You look like your you look like your bread's a little spicy. And you like it, and you look like your bread's a little sweet. I shake my head, trying in vain to keep an image of manliness. That's nah, hardly spicy at all. I see, I see. Must be why your face has gotten so red. Yes, exactly. The lack of spice has uh, got my blood up because of the disappointment. Amy laughs and swallows a last of her bread. Well, if you can't handle it, I'd be glad to take it off your hands. Take it off your hands. Yeah, because you just wolfed down yours so quickly. It doesn't mean I'm gonna give you mine. Emmy mock pouts, causing me to nearly choke on my bread with laughter. Oh, come on, Hassau. Aren't you supposed to be concerned with making sure I've got enough to eat now? We're dating, you know. Though, Emmy looks troubled all of a sudden. Can't say I feel any different. What do you mean by that? What makes this a date? It's just what we would have done anyway, really. This should feel different because... Before, when we had lunch, we were friends. Now we're a level above friends. You sound like Ren. Laughter escapes and Emmy grins. Well, she'd put the thought into my mind. She might have put the thought in my mind. We've talked about this sort of thing before. Really? About me? Not really, just stuff, really. Ren thinks that the change of the label from friend to girlfriend seems arbitrary most of the time. Like, there's no difference between the two. I think of at least one, you know. You don't tend to kiss your friends quite as much. For a second time today, Emmy blushes slightly and giggles. I suppose you're right. Exactly. I'm always right about things like this. Emmy <clears throat> rolls her eyes and chuckles. Guess you're pretty smart, huh? I nod in agreement. Yep. Even Moto thinks, though. He thinks you should go into some scientific study after graduation. Emmy raises an eyebrow. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm thinking I might actually do just that. Really, the more I consider the idea, the more it appeals to me. I make a mental note to look into it more closely. So what are you thinking of doing after graduation? Still planning on running? Emmy shrugs, seeming a bit hesitant. I don't know. If I'm good enough that I can find a team, I guess. I mean, you aren't sure. I haven't really thought about it, to be honest. Really. I probably should, you know? Graduation isn't that far off. Emmy fidgets a little nervously. Yeah, well, it's far enough, right? Besides, I've got other things to think about. There's a mischievous flash behind Emmy's eyes, and suddenly I find myself gloriously pinned against the tree. Like making sure this is a real date, right? I mean, uh. I mean if we don't kiss, then it's not a date at all, right? I suppose... Some <clears throat> strawberries and curry, not the best combination, but I don't think I mind. Emmy sits on his back on my legs and grins again. There, science would approve, right? I have the oddest mental image of Mudo nodding seriously and making a mark on some checklist. I can't help laughing at the idea. Well, I admit there's a first time I've ever witnessed it. There's a kiss being met with laughter. Should I feel offended? <laughs> no, no. I'm sure science approves. Emmy beams at me, and I find it increasingly difficult to keep my brain functioning properly. Oh, good. It is at this point, I notice that Emmy has stolen the remainder of my curry bread while I was otherwise occupied with images of teachers wielding clipboards. Hey! Emmy tries to look innocent, but considering she just crammed the last bits of my bread into her mouth, it does not appear to be working. These fucking two. I love these two. I love them so much. Fuck the writers who said they wouldn't stay together when they were in college. Fuck that shit. These two were getting married. They were having 15 billion point two children. How the fuck do you get point two of a child? Just the pinky. <laughs> just imagine Emmy pushes for 19 hours and it's just a fucking pinky. Sorry, <laughs> quite Thief. I shrug from my companion. I shrug from my, my companion is all I get in response. You use your feminine wiles on me. I was not hungry anyway, but I still feel a point needs to be made. 
Emmy seems confused by the phrase feminine wiles, but the understanding dawns her features are after a moment's thought. It wasn't anything of the sort. You were laughing. Feminine la wiles don't involve laughing. I guess I can't argue with this. That doesn't change your thievery. Emmy's la Emmy laughs in my injured tone and gives a playful shove. Fine, you can have the instant noodles. Are you kidding? This stuff's terrible. If anything, you should definitely eat it as punishment. And I laugh from the girl sitting on my legs, both of which have fallen asleep by now. I twitch one leg, trying to wake it up, and an unintended effect of unbouncing Emmy, who falls, falls to the side and silent. Eep! Oh, sorry about that. Legs fell asleep on me. Emmy remains on the ground, giggling. I stand up a little shakily, feeling the nerves in my legs return to normal. I was wandering over the scenery before fixing on the figure of Emmy, who was yet to get up. Her hair splayed out, out around her head, her arms are spread, laughter is bubbling up through her, op out through her mouth. Everything about Emmy seems condensed into this one image. Her energy, her spirit, her childish giggling. The urge to lay down in the grass with her rises swiftly from the back of my mind to the forefront of my thoughts. And indeed, I am convinced that I would love nothing more to do than I love nothing more than to do just that. Unfortunately, the sun is set, and it's probably time for us to get back to the dormitories. Well, I may be happy to stay out here all night. I don't think I have this ability. Besides, homework soon beckons. It wouldn't make sense to start thinking about things like university and then slack off, would it? I extend a hand to Emmy to help her up. We should probably get going. Emmy makes a mm. sour face. You're right. Now she grabs my, my proffered hand. And I pull her up to her feet and into a hug. This time, I'm the one who kisses her. I didn't lose this, this having Emmy against me. Seems a shame to leave, you know? Yeah, it does. But if we don't get back to the school soon, we'll probably get in trouble. Emmy pokes me in the ribs playfully. And you need to do your homework. Like, I'm sure. Sadly, you're absolutely right. I throw my arm around her shoulders and we make the trek back to the school, accompanied by occasional bouts of laughter as our conversation then jumps from subject to subject. Everything from running to school to the peculiar way that one of the cafeteria workers smells. All too soon, we find ourselves outside the girls' dormitory building. Well, I guess I'll be going then. I guess so, huh? Emmy grins at me while, well, again with that mischievous look. Are you going to be able to survive without me? laugh. I'm sure I'll manage. How terrible. Aren't you supposed, you're supposed to say something like I'll be kind in the seconds you are away. Nah, I don't think so. Emmy pulls me down to give a quick goodbye kiss and steps back looking unexpectedly shy. Thanks for dinner. I really had fun. Honestly, I did. So did I. I think we shall have to do it again sometime. Emmy laughs at my deadpan delivery and nods. See you bright and early tomorrow morning, right? Gotta run off that bread, after all. Of course, despite the fact that you ate most of it. Yes, despite that. See you later, Sal. As Emmy turns her head inside, I notice something weird. Something so weird, I'm surprised I didn't notice it earlier. She's limping slightly, favoring the left leg. Hey, Emmy! Hmm? Is your leg okay? Emmy looks confused, or at least fakes confusion. What are you talking about? Your right Girl, leg. don't lie to me. You over there limping. Your right leg, you're limping. It's the briefest flash of concern on Emmy's face. She doesn't want me Did to you get know. bit by an ant on your butt or something? <laughs> Either she doesn't want me to know, or didn't think I'd notice, or I prefer to think she just didn't realize it. Oh, that. Shrugs casually. Must have gotten knocked a little out of alignment during the picnic. No idea what would have caused that, of course. Thinking back to being pinned under the tree. Uh, you should have told me! Could have stopped and fixed it, you know? Maybe he waves a hand airily. Nah, it's not that big of a deal. Don't worry about it, okay, so? It's fine. Bullshit! Why do I get the feeling that she's convincing herself as well as me? Hey, let's see. What is the correct answer? Nuts. Mm. Well, actually, apparently it's either of these oh well let's press her yeah let's press her a little bit let's be a concerned boyfriend are you absolutely sure you don't want to just go ahead and adjust it before heading upstairs you 
you get hurt if you don't, right? I said it was fine to Sal. Seriously, don't worry about it. I've got some experience in these matters, after all. Yeah, I suppose so. And he grins reassuringly. Honestly, Sal, I appreciate the concern, but really, I am okay. Not really. Not really. I need to get going. Your attempts to keep me around are doomed to fail. <laughs> of course. Just prolonging the goodbye, I suppose. Another grin lights up Emmy's face. Good night, Sal. Good night. She limps inside. I find myself hoping she's okay despite her reassurances that she's fine. I think I can call this a successful first date. Hell, any day that ended that Emmy pinning me under a tree to need to kiss me can't be bad, can it? I head back to my room, mentally thank the gods that Kenji doesn't somehow ambush me in the hallway and get started on my homework. <laughs> oh god. All right, Kenji finds out and he's like, She did what to you? Dude, don't you know that a woman pens you? She basically is metaphorically taking away your manhood and is making your dick smaller? Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, for, for fuck's sake. The morning is far too early for my taste. It doesn't help that I had trouble sleeping last night. There's simply too many things on my mind to think about. My mind refused to slow down, and all that brain went downstairs. All that blood went downstairs. Jagging it, jagging it, jaggedy jack, spanking it, smacking it, smacking it, smack. <laughs> God damn it. Josh, I was throwing you a freebie. I know. And at the moment, I am not in the mood to sing South Park. I'm mad at South Park. We're not getting new episodes till next year. Oh, why'd you have to tell me? Instead, I replayed the rooftop, the park, and everything else over and over in my mind. There's a small part of my mind that's still paranoid that this has been all some kind of joke. That I'll meet up with Emmy he on the, at the track and she'll act like nothing happened yesterday. Pushing these thoughts to the back of my mind, I throw on running my I throw on my running clothes and open the door. Emmy's waiting for me with her usual smile. You're late. Or at least you're not early today. You tired or something? I find myself ruefully rubbing the back of my head. Something like that, yeah. Lots to think about and all that. Emmy giggles at my mild understatement. Yeah, I didn't sleep that well either. I was actually glad you weren't early because I wasn't early either. I wonder if it, the same thing kept us awake. The image for a weeping face passes through my mind. What kept you up? Emmy's expression falters and she quickly notices my curiosity and forces a smile. Nothing important. She's obviously not telling me something. Question is, should I press the issue? Something's clearly been bothering her for a while. I want to help her, but would it just come off as me being nosy? She's got to know I care about her, though. You sure? If something's bothering you, I'm here to help you sort it out. Amy laughs, but it's not a usual laugh. There's an edge to it that seems almost bitter. Sort it out? I'm not sure it can be sorted out, that's how. An almost grim smile across her lips. It's almost like a smile. It's like a smile of resignation. I don't think you could help me anyway. That hurts. I don't want to say it hurts to her, but it does. Doesn't she realize I'd want her not to be there for her when things go wrong? Well, I won't push you on the matter. But I'm here for you if you decide later that you'd like to talk about it. It might help. I can see the debate raging behind Emmy's eyes. It seems like she wants to tell me, but she's not sure whether or not she can. Hey, you know what? Forget about it for now, okay? We got running to do. The mention of running, something like that she can handle, brings Emmy back to her usual self. All right. Yep. Hurry up and stretch out, Hisao. We gotta get moving. She takes off like a shot. Far gotta go the fast. Ground. Gotta go fast. I watched the original Sonic trailer for the first time in a while. You know, with the Ken Pender's teeth. Why did they decide that was a good idea? To put the actual... To put gotta go fast in the actual trailer or just the original design in general? Yeah, I... Ugly Sonic, why? I have no idea why. Just like, why they decide, hey, let's give him like, weirdly human proportions, like the fucking segmented teeth and like, no gloves. Oh god, remember those, have you read those Meow the Hedgehog comics? 
Uh, no, I have not. But like, you know, the demon Sonic that like stares with its mouth hanging out and like its eyes wide open, like in the corner of a kitchen. Oh, room. that. Tails. That's what it's called. Gotta go fast, tails. And then the kid, and then like there's a blood stain on the kid's his bed, and the window is broken. Oh yeah, I remember those. I saw a fuck ton of them on TikTok and Tumblr. Yeah, those are actually kind of awesome. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Like, just really going into detail with how freaking scary that thing looks. Tails. Gotta go fast, Tails. Special zone, Tails. She takes off like a shot far quicker than I'm used to. Still, I try to keep pace with her, recklessly testing my limits. It gives me a feeling of freedom, like my heart's no longer important. I find myself wanting to laugh, filled with the feeling of moving beyond what I once called my boundaries. The nurse's warnings to not overdo things echo in my mind, then I disregard them. The feeling I have, this willingness to risk a heart attack for something so trivial as a morning run, feels out of character mm -hmm. for me. But is it? Or rather, should it be? I've got a weak heart, sure. But it'll never be need the capable kind of speed and endurance Emmy's capable of. Though I probably wouldn't be able to get uh, get that good even if I had a healthy heart. As we round the final bend, I feel my room my legs screaming in protest, but for the first time, I ignore them. I accelerate to the finish at a sprint, nearly catching up to Emmy. That was never going to happen, of course. Still, I feel surprisingly good. Oh, sure, my legs feel like they're about to catch fire, and I'm having trouble staying upright. But there's been a shift in, of some sort today. It's all thanks to the girl grinning at the finish line, waiting for me. I feel a little faster than usual. My comment is met with a grin and a shrug. Can't have you think I was going soft on you, now can I? But you managed to handle it just fine. Well, I couldn't have done it without you. Still feeling the high from the run and moved by a surge of gratitude, I seize Emmy in a hug. Thanks. Really, I'm not just saying that. I mean, you're dead. Emmy seems flustered by my words, squirming uncomfortably. Don't be silly, Asal. Huh, someone had to haul you out here, didn't they? It's not like you're doing anything for me, right? It's like you're... And it's not like you're not doing anything for me, right? I need a running partner, remember? I shake my head, still poignantly not letting go of Emmy, who stops squirming and merely looks at me with the quickly deepening blush that seems almost out of character. No, that's not true. You wanted a running partner, but you didn't need one. If I hadn't shown up the day after the festival, you'd still run, right? But it doesn't work the other way around. I only managed, managed to make it out a few times before the festival. Without you, I probably wouldn't have made it out after all. Emmy smiles at me and prods, a chest with one, and prods my chest with one finger. You are pretty lazy, Asal. Hey, I was giving you a compliment. Oh, well, you're welcome, I guess. I'll pay you back somehow. Oh, uh, well, that's not necessary, you know? I mean, I kind of like you, Asal. And being able to run with you in the mornings isn't the bad deal for me either, so... For someone who gets so much praise, she seems unused to gratitude. I can't think of anything else to say, so we fall silent. I become aware of Emmy's breathing, the dampness of her clothing, and uh, the scent of her. Then I make a split-second decision. Let's fuck in the broom closet. Hey. Coming off anyone else, it would stink. Coming off of Emmy, it fits her in a way nothing else could. Her skin is cool, slick with sweat, and the breeze causes goosebumps to rise. Almost without thinking about it, I lean down and meet Emmy's mouth, which has already been moved to meet my own. Her lips are soft, and she hums happily as we kiss, sending vibrations from her mouth to mine. There's a startling rightness to everything about this moment. We fit one another perfectly. Oh, uh, it's so fucking, so fucking, it's so fucking cute. I'm dying, ooh, literally. Ooh, ooh, kawaii. The kiss ends, and I finally let my arms drop back to my sides. I mean, smiling warmly at me and giggles again. Come on, Sal. We better go see the nurse. Then it happens. She turns, turns to begin walking, gives a tiny yelp, and stumbles forward. Emmy! I leap to steady her and to notice some, some concern that she's favoring the same leg as last night. Your leg. Emmy seems panicked and pushes away from me. It's fine! My expression must seem hurt because she hastens, hastens to apologize. Sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to push you like that. It was just... She stumbles for something to say. 
It's nothing, really. Hey, don't worry about it. She's so flustered, I decided to shrug the whole thing off. There's a cold feeling in the pit of my stomach now that won't go away. I tried to step in and help her. She pushed me away. Now you better force yourself to lift her up in the princess style and carry her to the nurse. Smiling, like a knight in shining armor. Smiling, I shove those thoughts back in my mind and concentrate on me. I just don't want you getting hurt, that's all. You don't have to worry about me. Honest. I'm fine. Yeah, you say that, but I don't believe you. Why would you tell me what's wrong? It's like she got, gets offended by my trying to help. What am I supposed to make of that? I'm still trying to sort out what happened on the track as we arrive in front of the nurse's office. Emmy raises her hand and the knock and hesitates and turns to me smiling guiltily. Hey, uh, can you do me a favor? Of course. Can you tell the nurse that I'll see him later? Girl, you better get your ass in that motherfucking room! I just remembered I have some stuff to take care of before class. So I really need to get moving. I peer at her closely and she fizzed under my stare. Yeah, she's clearly just avoiding the nurse. That leg of hers. Well, whatever. I said I'd help, so, so I will. But I'll make damn sure she sees the nurse before the day is out. Yeah, okay. I'll let him know. Emmy looks like I've given her a pony on Christmas. Thank you so much. You're the best, Sal. I'm rewarded from my complicity in her lie by a kiss that makes it all worth it, or so I tell myself. As Emmy heads out of the building, I try hard not to let her limp show. I knock on the door. On the, trying hard not to let her limp show, I knock on the door to the office. Ah, Sal, come on in. I don't see Emmy with you. She's not sick again, is she? In the tone of his voice, I don't think the, the nurse is expecting me to say, yes, she's ill. Uh, she said she'd forgotten to do something and she had to skip out, but she'll see you later today. The nurse and he use an exasperated sigh. Honestly, oh, that girl. Hmm? She's been avoiding me. Yesterday, she was in and out of here, not even taking off her prosthetics and not this. Well, it's not just me. I mean, he's, he doesn't want worrying. That's a comfort, I guess. I still feel like I should say something about her leg. I said I'd lie for her, but she really needs to see him. Now that she mentioned it, she was limping pretty badly today. Last night as well. The nurse's eyes narrow at the words, last night. And what exactly were you two doing last night? We were, uh, on a date. The nurse raises his eyebrows as if surprised. Really? Interesting. Huh? No, oh, nothing. His gaze turns thoughtful, and then he grins at me. You don't think I, you could use some of that boyfriend charm to come, to get her to come see me today, could you? Of course. I was planning on doing that anyway. I think she's really hurt and just pretending she isn't. Hmm, yeah, she does that. I'm afraid I'll make her stop running. Will you? I don't like to, but if it gets bad enough that she's been limping, well... I guess I'll have to see what's wrong for myself before I can make that call. I see. Emmy. Not allowed to run. Perish, you thought. I don't know if she'd be able to function without running. I wonder if she's reluctant to admit anything's wrong. Well, I'll make sure she sees you. Good. Oh, and before I forget, he grins at me at what I feel. He grins at me again in what feels like a vaguely threatening manner. Don't forget I know what medications you're on. You be careful around Emmy, got it? Wow, he looks serious too. Got it. Don't hurt Emmy, wouldn't dream of it. Grand! I did for you to be late, huh? Late as in the late Hisao Nakai. Oh, Runs boy. Gratefully dissatisfied. Sound better in my head. That was a bad nickname. You should feel ashamed for that. Well, at any rate, get out of here before you miss your first class. You got things to do, I'm sure. Show! I, as I leave, I notice the nurse pulling out his phone and dialing a number. Mako, your daughter's being a pain in the ass again. <laughs> oh, God. He really is her stepdad. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. I'd better head back to my room. I really will be late. Hey, wasn't he supposed to check my heart rate? Lunch bell sounds. I bring myself out of the stupor I slipped into during the morning classes. I lack of sleep last night, coupled with the increased pace of this morning's run, has left me feeling a little exhausted. 
Despite that, I find myself skipping stairs up to the roof. It's full of excitement now, in addition to the pleasure one gets from eating lunch with one's friends. True, both Emmy and Rin are still my friends, but Emmy has become more than that now. Rin's back on her usual spot in the roof, almost as if she's never been absent. Feeling better, I take it? Raised eyebrows, my reward for speaking. Better than what? Uh, better than you felt yesterday? Rin gives my question some serious thought. Hmm, I'm not sure. I think I might have felt rather good for some of yesterday, but it's all fuzzy. Too much cold I think medicine. I got really fucking high. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was asleep, and that usually is pretty good. But I can't remember when it feels like to, to be asleep, because I'm not conscious for it. It's a real problem. And then again, if I knew how good it felt, I might not sleep anymore. But this way, I keep trying, so I guess that's how I can keep from being overtired. Eternal mystery to keep you sleeping at night. Maybe mystery is the wrong word? Intangibility might be the proper way to describe it. You're not invisible. I see. No, I don't see it all. I have no idea what she's talking about, but that's okay since I rarely do. Do you remember what sleeping feels like? Did you just fart in your bike? Nope. Like yesterday, do you remember what you felt like sleeping yesterday? Well, I actually didn't get a lot of sleep yesterday. Hmm. Maybe that's because you remember subconsciously. Actually, I think I was worrying about Emmy. Doesn't Emmy worry enough about herself? I hadn't considered that, but it gives me pause. True, but she would ask for help if she needed it. Hmm. Rin frowns. I raise an eyebrow. Will I get a proper answer? Probably not. Is there something she should be asking for help with? Her leg, for starters. This seems to catch Rin's interest. Leg? It's hurt. She won't see the nurse about it. Rin shakes her head in disapproval. Mm. You have to make her. Like, she makes me go to class for her own good. Otherwise, she could lose her legs again, and that's just too weird. Losing things twice. Especially if you don't find them again to begin with. Unless prosthetics are the same as finding something. But that's a different kind of loss, isn't it? I think so. Hmm, I wonder. Wonder what? I mean, she seems to have snuck up on Rin to me, though Rin doesn't seem especially surprised, which itself unsurprising, I suppose. Rin managed to sit herself upright quite expertly, throwing her upper body forward, using being her momentum to ride herself. Good leg, how's it feel? Earns me a frown and a bit of a glare. It's okay, I think. It's not, it's worth, it's not worth worrying about. Tell that to the nurse. He's quite insistent that you visit him, you know. Emmy pouts like I just told her she's been grounded. He worries yeah. too much. It's not a big deal, it's just a little sore, just a little soreness. I try to resist mm. rolling my eyes in exasperation. If it's nothing, then you should have no problem seeing him, right? Aaron, Emmy narrows her eyes suspiciously. Did he put you up to this? Well, maybe. A little. But that's not the point. I would remind you to see him anyway. It would be terrible to see you really hurt not doing anything about it. That would make it worse. And I don't really want to see you hurt, you know? Call me crazy, but I prefer to see you happy and healthy. With each statement, Emmy's frown fades a little more. Until eventually she's grinning, albeit 
a little shyly. Well, if you're going to put it that way, then I guess I'll have to see him. Otherwise, you'll keep worrying and I'll never hear the end of it, right? That's right. I'll keep bugging you about it. I might put a damper on our dates. How's the food, Hisao? Talk to the nurse, Emmy. How's your day, Hisao? Talk to the nurse, Emmy. Hisao, I think I'm ready to go all the way. Talk to the nurse, Emmy! Yeah. See, it doesn't work, it doesn't work that well. Emmy giggles at my high-pitched rendition of her own voice and gives me an affectionate shove. My voice isn't that high, jerk. I thought it was pretty accurate. But I think you're gonna lose your shit when I send this to you. Emmy and I stare at Rin for a while before I burst into laughter. Emmy crosses her arms and huffs, mock offended. You're both jerks. Such vile, oh, oh come. Mm. C a u, C a l u m n. All right, how do, how the fuck do I say this? Calumnies. Calumnies. Yeah. Calum. Such vile calum. Yeah, calumnies, young woman. How? The, what the fuck does this mean? Hold on. Google, please answer my, all my prayers. Calumnies. The making of false or deformatory statements about someone in order to, or to damage their reputation. Slander. Uh, it's just another word of sl uh, for slander. Well, at least I'm not a girl. Slander, slander. <laughs> Wait, wh okay, where's that from again? Shouter. Slander! Oh god, I need to rewatch all of Chowder now. I'm stunned that you would call me, of all people, a jerk. Yeah, to be fair, that would technically be me. Honestly, I just. I don't know what to think. Emmy sticks her tongue out at me. You ass. So, Ren, how's the art club these days? Ren, surprisingly, seemingly as surprised by the sudden change of topic as I am, takes a minute to think before answering. So it literally has to load it in. Loading. I believe it's okay. Loading. Ren.exe activated. Mm. Although Nomi keeps telling me to work harder. Oh yeah, because he's kind of a dick. Hmm. But I don't think he understands my methods. Classic art student answer. He's always struck me as slightly creepy, especially with the fact that he's constantly sticking his fucking tongue out, and he sounds like yeah. Dr. Eggman. Yeah, not only that, but I feel like if he was in the anime, he'd be screaming, Oh, go! Every time he sees... <laughs> oh, God. Have you ever watched Azamanga Dayo? No. You know, like, one of the girls... His teachers, like, I keep forgetting what his actual name is, but like, literally, like, when his first appearance, one of the main characters asks, Hey, why'd you want to become a teacher? And his answer is to yell, Because I like high school girls. Oh my god. Fucking real, honestly. <laughs> and I say that in a very unfortunate sort of way, not in a I agree with it sort of way. Oh yeah. There are teachers who only want to become teachers because they like high school girls. <laughs> Ren ponders a statement for a while. I never really noticed. Fuck! Oh, that was me. I've never really noticed. But I don't pay much attention to him most days. Or maybe that's why. How often do you meet? Thinking of joining us out? What? Nah, I've already decided to join a club. Really? Which one? Well, it's not really much of a club, to be honest. Oh, you joined the tea club. No, I joined the science club, I think. Amy looks highly confused. You have a science club? Uh, not really, it's just me. Hey, Sal, it's not a club. It's sitting in your room reading books. No, I mean, it's just me and Mudo. I'm just the only student so far. Mudo? Really? Thought strikes her. 
Oh, is that what you were talking oh. about yesterday? Your meeting with Mudo. Yeah, that was our first meeting, I guess. Let me giggles. Nerd. Hey, can't help being clever. You know, I could have used your help years ago. You should have had your heart attack earlier in life, Asao. I laughed. Wow. Wow. That's a statement. <laughs> I laugh and then realize it's probably one of the very rare times I've laughed about my heart attack. Hindsight. Yeah. The ring of the bell ends our conversation. Hmm. Guess we better go. Yeah, I guess so. Come on, Rin. You too. Rin is apparently begun to doze off, so Emmy gives her a sharp bump. Hey, what? What, what happened? Are my titties on? I almost had it. Sorry, but you she need almost fell asleep. I disagree. And maybe if I nap in class, I'll get it this time. I fucking love Rin. Yeah, me too. Change of locations is sometimes helpful for that kind of thing. Uh, uh, boss makes a dollar, I make a dime. That's why I shit on company time. Yeah. Neither Emmy or I bothered asking what it is. The it, uh, the it is Dr. House. She's going to catch him and beat him with this fucking cane. Yeah. As we arrive in the <laughs> classroom, Emmy gives me a quick kiss and heads down the hallway. Hey, as fucking he Freddie Highmore yells about his surgeon status. Ren and Tessa. Because I am a surgeon! I, I turn to enter the classroom to be met by the duo of Shizune and Misha. Misha seems to be fighting a losing battle to keep from breaking into a fit of giggles when she translates Shizune's latest rant. Oh boy. While we are pleased, nay thrilled, to see how well you've managed to make a new friend, new friends and forge relationships, with such a cutie too, Hichan. I think that last part was probably Misha, because she's a lesbian. Yeah. We nevertheless feel compelled to gladly remind you that public displays of affection are strictly forbidden. Really? That's disappointing. That's disappointing, Hichan. By section eight of the code of conduct laid out in the student ha well, the student handbook can go fuck itself. Yeah, shove it where the sun don't shine, biatch. No, seriously, why the hell do schools ban public dis displays of affection? Because if they, they are affectionate to each other, that means they aren't being brainwashed. Ugh. Which means they have something to look forward to other than their meaningless lives. Being slaves to capitalism to pump out more babies in order to make more slaves for capitalism. But wouldn't showing his displays of affections, you know, set up the idea of them pumping out more babies for capitalism? Yeah, but if they're affectionate about it, that means that they like each other. And we need to have every man hate his girlfriend. And every wife hate her husband. Yeah, every single fucking boomer who makes a joke about hating his wife. Uh, and every boomer wife who has to make a joke about needing to just accept it because that's her role. Which I swear to God, I'll never fucking get this shit. Be affectionate to your partners. It helps. Give them hugs. Uh, kisses on the forehead. You don't need to be screwing on every surface of your house 24-7. and But being nice helps. In this case, however, ignorance of the law may be your excuse, as we are feeling lenient. Jizuna, if you're gonna snitch on me, prepare to throw hands. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. And the paperwork required to punish the both of you would only add to the already mountainous volume of work that confronts us, the sole members of the student council. And besides, you two are adorable together. I also don't give a fucking shit. Therefore, consider this a formal warning and please refrain from such displays in the future, at least when Shizune can see you, Hichan. This whole feel feels so patently ridiculous that I can't help but reply in the same pompous manner. Well, I for one feel enlightened. I apologize profusely for my rash actions, will strive to contain my baser impulses which, I fear, impel me towards such inappropriate displays of public affection. 
It's hardly my wish to burden an already overworked student council with such petty manners. That petty matters. And will do my best to make your lives easier in this matter in the future. At least when Chizune is watching. This that la this last line is delivered with a wink to Misha, who finally loses control of her laughter. <laughs> well said, it, John. Chuckling a little myself, we entered the classroom. I really don't understand what the fuck, like Shizune, like really, what bug does Shizune have up her ass? And we'll figure that out in the next in the next video because I swear to God we've been recording for an hour and a half. Hold on, let me see. Yep, we hour and a half. Yes, yeah, I gotta get up in the morning. I got a therapy appointment. Oh. So, yeah. So that means no Twin Peaks then, huh? Nah. Oh boy. Okay. Well. Everything we do, everything we sing, everything we say, we do it for love. Peace. Bye, bye guys.